Canada is a huge country. It has twice the area of the whole European Union. However, its population is 12 times smaller than in Europe. Besides, the Canadians are settled in a very strange way. Almost all of them live not far than 150 kilometers from the US border. Many people think that the Canadians live somewhere far in the north, but that is not true. This is the 49th parallel. It's the longest and the straightest border between two countries. So all of the Americans live to the south of that line. But the thing is that the majority of the Canadians, 70% to be precise, also live to the south of the 49th parallel, in this red zone. Now let's lower the line. Half of all the Canadians live to the south of this line, on this small area of land. As you understand, the majority of the Canadians live southern than the states of Washington, Montana, North Dakota and Alaska, of course. But that is not all. This is Smart Stories Channel. We tell stories that make you think. This is the southernmost point of Canada, Middle Island in the Erie Lake. Many large US states are located north to this point, including Oregon, Washington, Idaho, Montana, South Dakota, North Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, Alaska, and the larger parts of Wyoming, Michigan, New York, and Massachusetts. As we see, there are far more Americans living to the north of the southernmost point of Canada than the Canadians. What is more interesting is that 80% of the Canadians live only 150 kilometers far from the US border. But Canada is a huge country. So why do Canadians settle so close to the American border? Though Canada is far larger than the whole of Europe, its population is only 38 million, while there are 450 million people living in Europe. In California, there are more than 38 million people. It's almost the size of the population of Poland. It means there are very few people to inhibit such a huge country. That is why the whole population of Canada just lined up all over the US border. The majority of Canadians live in a small area 1,100 kilometers long. Cities like Toronto, Ottawa, Montreal and Quebec City are located here. The reason for that is the geography and history. It is not a secret that it is quite cold in Canada and half of the country is covered with the so-called Canadian Shield. It's a huge mass of rocky plains with a thin layer of soil which makes agriculture almost impossible here. Winters here are cold and dark. For that reason, nobody has built any cities here throughout history until the 20th century. Only thanks to industrialization, railway and asphalt road development, the Canadians managed to provide the northern regions with food. In short, the majority of the Canadian lands cannot be viewed as a proper area for the construction of cities because of the severe climate. First of all, it is very expensive. Secondly, nobody wants to live in a subarctic climate. This is why throughout history Canada grew far from the shield, in places where massive agriculture is not a problem. For example, next to the Great Lakes. This is the largest freshwater reservoir in the world. Together they work as an inner sea and can be considered a sort of a warmth generator. They absorb heat in summer and slowly radiate it during winter months. The Great Lakes prevent severe colds which come alongside the Arctic winds from north. Besides, there is a constant heat wave coming from the Mexican Gulf, which influences positively on the climate of the area. Because of all this, a kind of a corridor forms from Quebec City to Windsor, which has a more enriched soil than anywhere in Canada. The, the largest agricultural companies are based here. They are able to provide food for a large number of people. The climate in this region is so good that fruits may be grown here, as well as it is good for grapes and vinery. But climate and agriculture are just one reason why Canadians live along the US border. Another reason is the geopolitical interests of Canada. This is the St. Lawrence River, one of the most important rivers in all of North America. It has the largest estuary in the world. Also, it has been the only way for large ships to deepen into North America for the last five centuries. The first European ships arriving from the Atlantic Ocean tried to go as south as possible. They went far, but soon dangerous and impassable rapids started. They are close to the area where modern Montreal is situated. Actually, Montreal became a base where European ships docked for further expeditions to the south. For 500 years, this city has been the main port on the St. Lawrence River and the gates to the heart of the North American continent. But as time passed, humanity became more able to pass the obstacles of nature. In the beginning of the 19th century, the Canadians built the Lachine Canal, which allowed ships to bypass the dangerous rapids. 
Thanks to the complicated system of canals and gateways on the Great Lakes, the sheep now can freely move any direction. These allow cities like Buffalo, Detroit, Chicago and Duluth to become important trading ports with a stable access to the global ocean. This is why Chicago in particular has become the center of the American railroad system. This city is located in the center of the country and has access to the Great Lakes, which are connected with the St. Lawrence River. Goods can be imported and exported from here all over the world. Thanks to St. Lawrence, ports of Toronto, Montreal and Quebec have flourished. Their importance in world trade grew and resulted in the increase of population, and Canada gained geopolitical influence in this region. Just take a look at the historical data of the population of Montreal and Toronto only in the context of a century. The population of Toronto grew from 86,000 people to the size of a megapolis with 2,200,000 people. Montreal grew from 150,000 to 1,700,000 people. No doubt that the control over the St. Lawrence River gives Canada a geopolitical importance. Until 1875, the Canadians happily lived in the southern part of Ontario and Quebec provinces. They did not want to risk building large cities to the west. The thing is that the ice shield covers northern Ontario, dividing the country into two halves. Only fur and skins, and later timber and minerals, motivated the Canadians to send expeditions to the west. On the roots of their explorations, cities like Winnipeg, Calgary, Edmonton and Granville were founded. To transport freight and people between the cities, the Canadian Pacific Railway was constructed, which was supposed to connect the east and west of Canada. However, northern Ontario is covered with impassable thick forests, rocky terrain, as well as numerous lakes, swamps and rivers. However, the railway managed to overcome those obstacles and open a way to Manitoba, Saskatchewan and eventually to the Pacific coastline and a settlement called Granville, which was later renamed Vancouver in 1886. The construction of the railroad had another geopolitical influence on the USA, and the fear of the Canadians against the American expansion faded away. Despite the fact that the railroad connected east and west, northern Ontario did not become home for the Canadians, just like all other lands of the Canadian Shield. The Shield mainly consists of the Precambrian soil and stretches from the Arctic Ocean in the north to the Great Lakes in the south, from Labrador in the east to Saskatchewan in the west. This area is rich with minerals like nickel, gold, silver and copper, but the rocky terrain and poor soil make this area inappropriate for agriculture. Severe colds and short days in winter keep people away from building large cities here. This is why there are only tiny settlements in the Canadian Shield largely inhabited with miners and timbers. Of course, the Canadian government is trying to improve this by attracting new migrants with various programs, but that doesn't really help. Until people learn how to build comfortable settlements in the subarctic climate, like those futuristic cities with their own microclimate, the northern parts of Canada are destined to stay sparsely populated. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel if you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching and see you soon. This is Smart Stories Channel. We tell stories that make you think.